Hello and welcome to another episode of MVP playing FM21 in the year 2034. And only one game has transpired since we beat Barcelona away at the new Camp. Uh, we had a two-all draw against Augsburg in the league. And that was pretty disappointing. We were leading two times away from home. I know I had the young boys at the back, but they just uh, they let us down. Unfortunately, but it was a bit of a rotation with uh, with the fact that we have Barcelona three days after. And then four days after that, we've got Hertha Berlin in the league. And the league is looking pretty tight. Those uh, drop points against Augsburg was, uh, is probably done us for the league this season. We're now five points behind Bayern. I know we have them on the last day of the season. We've also got Hertha now. So, I don't know, but... Hey, if we can uh, if we can knock out Barcelona and get into the semi final, that would be that'd be lovely, wouldn't it? So let's go and uh, try and do that. So into this tactical meeting we go. The uh, eleven starting today is going to be losing there. A back four of Salim, Bonio, Gurin, and Paolo. A midfield three of Reina, Ruiz, and Carlos. And a front three of Terranova, Pereira, and Ancho. Uh, a few, I would say a more normal looking first eleven for us. Both of our centre backs back in and fit, and which is nice. I mean, Bonio's still missing some sharpness, but we can deal with that. Ruiz yet again lost some sharpness. Uh, Tite isn't fully match fit, which is why he's on the bench. But other than that, we're looking all right. We're looking okay. We're going to start positive, but hopefully we can limit this Barcelona side. Because we don't want them to get an early goal. That is the last thing we want right now. Because we've got the advantage. Away goals are still a thing just for this game. And in, in the year 2034, maybe it's come back round. But as of FM22, there will be no away goals. So we may as well make use of them while we have them. And we have two of them. So... Important, important. Reyna here with a, uh, a corner. It's cleared by uh, Ballon d'Or winner, Dizan. And Cabrera can just make his way up the pitch. Passes back to Pala. That's the Stefano Pala. <gasps> oh, it's not. Oh, it's not. I think it is, you know. I remember them loading him out and thinking it was weird. Uh, goal kick comes all the way out. Back to Bonio. Ancho on the right-hand side. See if he can find a pass. He finds Reyna. Terra Nova. Back to Ruiz. Salim. Reyna. Reyna's in here. Captain Reyna. Giovanni. Four minutes in. Puts us 1-0 up on the night. And we've got a two-goal cushion. And Barca needs to score three to be within a chance of salvaging this game now. Lovely pass from Salim Atalai there. Reyna struggles past his man. Doesn't do him for pace. He literally forces him out of the way. And I know he's not a big dude. So, lovely stuff. I have to see it is Stefano Fowler, isn't it? It is. Oh, it is. As if he's only a 54 in the scout report. How's that? I know Atalai's good and Bonio, But Bonio's not a right back. I think he's a, I think he's a great player. I mean... He's only had 16 games in his time at Juventus. But I, I, don't, I don't know. I think I think they're doing him a disservice there. But that's not what's important. What's important is we're ahead. And we want to keep it like that. So a lovely start. Just what we needed from the captain there. Just to find his selection over the unfit Tite today. I did think about it. I really did. Uh, Luca Laya cuts inside the box and sticks it in the bottom corner. Luca Lair that could have been at Juventus and could be out of the Champions League if he was. So probably made the right decision there. And it is one all. They do get one back. Uh, if they get another, we're even, actually. So I was wrong before. If they get another one, 2-1 to Barca is the only way we can go into extra time. The only way. Jose Alejandro in the box. Passes out to the injured Warren. Dizan, Luca Lair. He's put two pastas now. And that is the scoreline that means extra time and penalties. We need to do something about him. Where is opposition instructions? So we've got him on hard tackling. Show onto foot. 
and always press intensity. I'm going to tightly mark him as well. Let's let's do it a lot. Let's do it a lot. That's fine. Okay. Because uh, yeah, that's uh, that's not what we wanted to happen after we took the lead. Throw in here, Stefano Paola, my man. Back up to Cabrera. Uh, Paola, oh, Terra Nova, sorry. That's definitely outside the box and isn't even a foul. So I don't know why. I don't know why, ref, you need to see it on the VAR, but I can tell you now, it's not a foul. Don't worry about it. It's uh, it's not a penalty either, so don't worry about that either. And yep, no penalty. I can't believe it's a free kick though. Terra Nova living dangerously. Luca Laya, probably the man of the match so far with two goals and it's cleared away. Barca have come out swinging though which is not what we wanted, to be honest. Ancho and Terranova not doing great. Neither is Roberto Carlos. Paolo with a bruised thigh. Uh, I'm going to try and get him through a bit more of the match. Luca Lai looking quite tired, actually. Sergio Pereira hitting the post there. I think the goalkeeper gets a hand to it from the free kick. And it can clear it away. But I think if they can... Dizan's tired as well. If those two come off, we could be within a shout. Because, especially if this ends up going to like extra time and penalties. Yeah, Luka is off. Yao Felix comes on for Barcelona, though. Well. Well, well, well. Yao Felix, who went to Man City for 160 million and then Barcelona for 77. Still there. Still knocking around. Still doing all right. Sevens and above. 34 years old. Highlights. Atalai with the throwing. Comes out to Bonio. Ruiz. Come on, boys. Get one more. Comes out to Paolo, who's nursing that injury. Finds Ancho. Finds Pereira. Ooh. It was a snapshot, and it does go wide. Yao Felix standing over a free kick. Dizan. Dizan. Oh, right. Now we're in trouble. Now we are in trouble. So let's pause the tactics. If his injury is affecting him, we will bring on Alvaro Fernandez. Um, we go attacking. We take off Roberto Carlos for Tite. Ruiz is not having a good game, so can we change this around a little bit? Make Ruiz the Mazala. Bring Reina further forward, and Tite can be the deep line playmaker. We'll go with that for a little bit. Bellingham is waiting on the wings. Ancho and Terranova having appalling games. We'll confirm those changes. And as soon as we can, we're going to encourage the team. See what can be done here. Because this is not the way I want to go down. Another throw from Atalai to Reina. Ball forward for Ancho. He can get there. Puts the ball across. Comes out to Fernandez. Ruiz. Fernandez again. Ball over for Ancho. Ball in for Piera. Right, Sergio's got one back. We are technically behind. Technically. Away goals. If away goals is the thing that sends us home, I'm not going to be happy. But it is 4-4 on aggregate. And I knew Sergio Pereira would have something to say before this game was finished. Um, God. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> We're going to have to bring on Bellingham. We're going to have to do it. There's not a lot of choice here. So that's what we've done. We need to find one more goal. 15 minutes on the clock. And I'm going to change it up. We're going to go very attacking. Terranova and Ancho. Tiring. Five minutes left. And we're going to switch up. And try and force a goal here. So Sergio on the complete forward. Advance forward. Yep. Let's do that. And very attacking. Demand more. Five minutes of extra time. Come on. There's got to be something here. Didn't see us going out like that. I'll be honest. We were the better side. Terranova on a 
Oh, frustrating. Really frustrating. Out of way goals. I mean, what can be said? What can what can we do? Really, what we can do? Chelsea with Ansu Fati and knocked out by Paris Saint Germain with Kulaveski still knocking around. That is disappointing. Really, really disappointing. We could have done with the money as well. So we received £10 million. And because of that, we've ended up in the Champions League? No, Europa League. No. We're going to qualify for Champions League. That's no problem. Right, that's, that's sad. Let's just, yep. Yeah. Okay, FFP says we're uh, not making that project. Oh. <laughs> 138 million projected loss at the end of the season at the moment. God, what have I done here? What have I done? Right, okay, I guess we come back for the uh, next game against Hertha Berlin in the league. And I mean, this, this could kind of decide it. I mean, well, as far as I'm concerned, let's do Hertha and Bayern. Let's finish it up right now. Let's go. So anything but a win here today and our league chances are pretty much finished. The 11 going out is Deleuze in net, a back for Slim, Borneo, Gurin and Fernandez. A midfield three of Reina, Ruiz and Carlos and a front three of Terranova, Piera and Ancho. Uh, a lot of players have gathered interest over the past few, uh, well, past few weeks. Uh, well, literally today. Uh... Ancho wanted by Roma and Barca. Terranova wanted by Roma as well. Mehmet Kandan still wanted by Real Madrid. Jonathan Gomez wanted by Liverpool. I think it's just coming up to that time of year where, you know, the end of the season, clubs are looking out. Uh, is that? I thought it was a negative partnership there. I've been quite shocked. Uh, Guri not having a good of a time as Bonio, but anyway, like I said, we, we lose here today. I think even a draw at that point it's pretty much useless a, yeah a draw for either of us is actually useless because we hand the title to Bayern Munich and we don't want that so the table as it stands if if we beat Hertha now we end up above them or is it the same points is this live score this is live score so we end up on the same no if we beat them we end up on 67 60 no, we end up on 66, they end up on 65. I'm so terrible at maths sometimes. Uh, Ruiz plays through Ancho. Ancho one-on-one, -on -one, can't miss. A lovely assist there from Juan Pablo Ruiz. And Ancho can stick it away. And that's what we need. It's what we had against Barcelona early on, which we threw away. So uh, let's not do that again, really. That's the plan. So yeah, we head up to 66 points above Hertha on 65. Bayern Munich still five points away from us. They have to drop points. Oh. Bonio with an injury. So we'll bring on Kandan for Bonio and hope that's okay. I hope that injury to Bonio is not too permanent. Pulled wrist ligaments. Wrist ligaments. 1-0 half time though. We can be pretty pleased with that. We'll try and influence the players. Get them to really go for this. Terranova not having the best of games out on the left again. Ancho obviously doing well from the right having scored the goal. Gurin with a free kick to Fernandez, Ruiz, Reina, Piera, Terranova out on the left. What can he do? Finds Reina, Fernandez, Reina tries to put it across, comes out to Fernandez. It's cleared away, and oh, her, her throw are breaking here. Stratfall on the right, cuts across, Salim with the header away, and we can break ourselves. Roberto Carlos with a lovely touch there. Can he find Piera? He's in behind. He's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Oh, it's straight at him. Oh. That would have definitely put some daylight between us. Reyna with the resulting corner. Ruiz was waiting, but couldn't quite do anything with it. And uh, Reyna was going to be offside there. So, Less than ideal. We'll tell Atalite to man-mark that guy. Hertha picking up some... 
a cumulative yellow cards here. Stratfall finds Trittel on the right. He goes past Roberto Carlos. No. No way that's in the box. I'm not having it. There's no way. I can't, I can't believe that. Martin Peterson. It's not in the box. It's just not. It can't be. Oh, making me sweat, I swear. Well, the uh, resulting free kick didn't do much. Okay, so let's replace our left and right midfielders here. Santito can come on the right. He can play as the inside forward. Sure. And then who's going on the left? I guess Bellingham. Not a lot of options there. Definitely something we need to invest in is depth next season. That's uh, if we're still here. Who knows? I mean, if we're out of the Champions League, I'd, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm, I'm genuinely terrified. I can't make any more substitutions, can I? That's unfortunate. Okay. Right, let's continue then. Reina's just tired. Salim is tired. Roberto Carlos is tired. And her to have a goal kick and a highlight to play with here. Mendes playing down the left. Puts it forward for Mafini, who's scored against us before now. Poor ball in, and Ruiz can play back to Deleuze, who clears the ball away, trying to find Piero, can't do much with it. Celine with the header away to Santiso, and Santiso can work his magic out on the right. Takes on his man, cuts it across. Bellingham, Piero! Yes! I mean, how Bellingham doesn't score there, I, I have no idea. I really don't. But Piero was there to gobble up the chance. And it is 2-0, and maybe our title hopes aren't dashed quite yet. I mean, a wonderful last-ditch effort there from the defender to block Bellingham. It just falls kindly for Piero, who's like any good striker in the right place at the right time. Let's hope they don't answer back instantly here. Mifini finds Bellingham. Bellingham plays in Santiso again, and we've got a break on again. Santiso... Past his man, straight at Garcia. He is really good, Santi, so he definitely needs to play more. You can say it's my fault for not playing him often enough, but there's only really one room for one, uh, one striker. Or one striker to play every game, really. But we'll take that 2-0. We were the better side. You can tell by the XG. They had no shots on target the whole game, so... We can be pretty happy with that, although, how do I, what? If they've had no shots all game, how does my goalkeeper get man of the match? Something to ponder. Definitely something to ponder. And yeah, table as it stands, Bayern five points away from us. So we need them to slip up before we play them in the last game of the season. Uh, and I think we just go and do it now. So, board initial budgets at 4.9 million per week and a 238 million pound transfer budget. Does that come in now? Yeah, it has. We're still looking to fail it. So, it's projected now at 44.8. Uh, I've no idea how. The, how, how could somebody explain FFP to me, please? Because I don't. No, I, this is the thing. I understand FFP. I don't understand what's happening with our finances at all. I'm so confused. Okay, this isn't the Bayern Munich game. Because the season was kind of over by that point. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Things, things ain't rosy. <laughs> so, let's have a look at our season review for our first season in charge of Borussia Dortmund. Uh, the new arrivals as they came in. Signing of the season undoubtedly goes to Sergio Pereira. Um, I mean, world-class player, 23 years old. We spent a truck ton of money on him. But average 7.61, 24 goals in 22 appearances. Ridiculous. Um, we've also brought in Leandro Teleri, Paolo Santiso, Bonio, Ancho, Vigno, Ruiz, Terranova, Carlos... I mean, that is essentially a first 11 right there. So the fact that we've not done all that well 
might have something to do with the fact that there was a massive influx of players who have never played with each other before. So that's a possibility. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I would also argue that we had some flops. Roberto Carlos was not a 55 million pound player this season at all. Only two goals and only four assists mainly, 6.8 from 34 games. It's just not good enough. Terranova did okay, I guess. He had a, a hot streak, but he was very hot and cold. Uh, 18 goals from 45 appearances, five assists, not managing a seven. Ruiz was, again, okay. He, he had eight assists, pretty good, but we'd expect more from him. Uh, Vigno, these came in in January, and yeah, okay, fair enough. He's young, he's got plenty of time ahead of him. Ancho was pretty decent out of uh, Ancho and Terranova. I expected Terranova to be way better, but no. Ancho did very well this season for us. 11 goals, 13 assists, and a 7.04. Bonio coming in at a 7.09 for the season. Uh, just, he's a great defender. Elite centre-back. So, yeah. German Santiso, 25 goals and 5 assists in, well, 40 appearances. A lot from the bench after uh, January when Sergio Pereira came in. But for less than £40 million, that's pretty good. Uh, Paolo as well, much better than I anticipated. Uh, 7.14, six assists from left back. Uh, and an average in, yeah, he's, for £25 million, he's a, he's a lot of player. And I'm pretty happy we picked him up, to be honest. Uh, Teleri also came in, only £10 million. I mean, we've got loads of bloody goalkeepers, but what what's another one? So uh, he was all right, but yeah. Sergio Pereira is definitely the one. So transfers out. Uh, Chekalam, 17 million quid. Uh, Akimi went. Uh, Bashbayuk went. Triest. Philip Zorn as well. But not for big money. We spent big. We didn't really receive big. So here we are. The league table as it ended up. Uh, Bayern Munich finishing top of the podium, 78 points uh, from 34 games. Hertha finishing above us on 75, and we finished on 73. Literally, the difference between the two sides is a victory. And that's it. There it is. Um, top competition top scorer was German Santiso. He had a lot more time than Pereira to uh, dig himself in for that. Uh, teams that were relegated, Freiburg at the bottom, Stuttgart, and then Hamburger goes into the playoff. Leipzig finishing fifth, Schalke finishing fourth, both on the same points, but a goal difference uh, edges it for Schalke. And a lot of mid-table teams. Um, we just, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I felt like we could score a lot of goals, but I just, I think it was the middle of the park for us, because I'm quite happy with our defensive makeup. Even if we conceded a lot of goals. I don't know. It's a weird one. Champions League. We were knocked out in the quarterfinal by Barcelona after being beat at home two, uh, two goals to three. That was disappointing. But we, we, did, uh, we actually did very well in the Champions League. I think we made a good account of ourselves. Uh, especially away at Liverpool. That 5-0 was something special. Four goals for Piero in that game. Um, and then the uh, the cup, we were knocked out by Frankfurt after getting through against Hertha Berlin in penalties. So, yeah, that wasn't ideal. Uh, moments to remember. We had our biggest win, which was against Dreich. Dreich? I don't know, my German's not good. Uh, in the cup, 7-0 win, 2 from Santiso, Reina, 2 from Terranova, TT and Ancho on the score sheet. And the match to remember was apparently a 4-0 victory against Hamburger. Uh, just don't agree with that at all. How, how can you beat a 5-0 away victory at Liverpool? I don't know. But goals from Santiso, Terranova, Bellingham and Ancho in that one as well. And then the goal of the season was to Jude Bellingham uh, against Ajax in the Champions League. I mean, let's let's watch it. <laughs> so it's being played forward. Geelan, Bellingham. Yeah, okay. That's that's a good goal. That's pretty good. Fair enough. Um, yeah, that's uh, yeah. I'll take that. Finances. 
Oh no. So we keep our club reputation at four and a half. Sponsorship goes down. Even though it's the same as last season. Broadcast revenue went way down. Corporate goes up. Competition prize money was a little bit down. And then commercial goes up. Top shirt sales. Pereira at the front. Piet per Pereira. I sometimes say Pierre and sometimes say Pereira. 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 He's at the top. Reina, Ruiz, Terranova and Roberto Carlos. How are we lined up for the season? Apparently we're the losing net. Atalai, Kandan, Gurin and Paolo. Tite, Bellingham, Reina, Terranova, Pierre, Pereira, Pereira and Santiso. Hmm... Just no accolade to managers. That's unfortunate. Fan to of this season was Salim Atalai from right back. And to be fair, he had a pretty good time. Signing of the season was Pereira. Pereira. Uh, top goal scorer was Santiso. Most assists was Ancho with 13. Um, yeah. We did break some records. Pereira with four goals in a game. And the highest transfer fee paid. So, yeah. I mean... Uh, it was a disappointing season. It really was. I'm actually surprised I'm still in a job. Yeah. I. I so they've added in developed players using the club's youth system. And make the most of set pieces. I mean, I know I can't... I really hope that in FM22 they get rid of this. Or at least tweak it so I can change it. Because if I do this, watch... Suggest that. If I, just, if I just do that again. Suggest that. They literally will not budge on anything. So. Great. So now we have to do set pieces and develop players within the club. So yeah, I guess that's the first disappointing season we've had in this save. And it could get more disappointing because the finances don't look great. They really don't. So if we if we don't end up if we get cut from the Champions League next season, I don't know what happens. I really don't. So uh, I'm going to leave it open to interpretation, and I'm going to find out what happens. Either way, thanks for watching this season uh, and this future save with me. Uh, I'll be doing an FM22 save soon because it's the new game. We got to play it, haven't we? I've been MVP. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.